Okay, part B asks, when is the rate of change of population increasing and when is it decreasing? So you might think, first of all, wait, didn't we just answer that question? But this one is asking the rate of change, which means we want the rate of the rate. So we actually need to take the second derivative here. Well, let's recall that our first derivative was 36e to the negative 0.02t over 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.02t all squared. So if you think about taking the derivative of this, you might immediately get overwhelmed and just say, nope, not going to do it, impossible. Well, remember, when you have something overwhelming like this, you can take the derivative of it by using logarithmic differentiation, and then you don't have to apply all the combinations of all of those rules. So logarithmic differentiation works by taking the derivative of both sides. So on the left-hand side, I take the natural log of this. On the right-hand side, I take the natural log of that. Let's work with the right-hand side first. I'm going to separate out my fraction, my fraction, by writing it as a subtraction. So I have natural log of 36e to the negative 0.02t minus natural log of 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.02t squared. Well, my well, my first natural log has, so I can rewrite that as an addition. And this one has a power in it, so I can pull that down in front. And so that gives me natural log of 36 plus natural log of e to the negative 0.02t minus 2 times the natural log of 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.02t. So I have Simplify the logs as far as possible. Do not think that I can simplify this log here. If you have addition or subtraction inside the log, that needs to stay. The only time you can separate it is if it's division or multiplication inside the log, and those separate into subtraction and addition in between logs. So be careful where that addition goes. Okay, so let's see what's happening on the left-hand side we have the natural log of n prime of t. So now what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of both sides. So let's look at the derivative of this here. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over. So I have 1 over the n prime of t. And then I have the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative. So that is times the second derivative. So there's my chain rule. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over times the derivative of the inside, which is the second derivative. And I know that I can solve for n double prime of t eventually by moving this guy over to the other side. So the derivative of the right-hand side. First, I have natural log of 36. Well, you might be inclined to think that the derivative of that is 1 over 36. But think about this backwards first. If I do natural log of 36, that's a an actual number, that's an actual decimal. So it's just a constant. So if I take the derivative of any constant, that's actually going to be zero. So I don't have to worry about that. If I look at the second piece, I have natural log of e. So I can actually simplify that before I take the derivative. So those cancel out. So really here, all I have left is this. So if I were to take the derivative of that, that would just give me the constant in front negative 0 0.02. Now, this one's going to be the most complicated, but, I've it, but we can work through it. And so I pull my constant of 2 out. When I take the derivative of natural log, that's 1 over. So that would be 2 over my inside. So that's the derivative of the natural log. But then the chain rule says I need to take the derivative of the inside of this. So the derivative of that is 3e to the negative 0.02t. And then I actually have a second chain rule here because I have e to a power, 
So now I need to take the derivative of that power. And so that is times negative 0 0.02. And so I have taken the derivative of both sides of this equation. Okay, now we know eventually that we're going to want to solve for this in double prime of t by moving this guy over to the other side. But let's actually simplify this over here for a little bit because I know I'm going to have to do more work with it. When is it increasing? When is it decreasing? So I want to make sure that it is simplified as much as possible. Okay, so what I want to do then is I actually want to put all of this over here as a common denominator. So that means I need to take this and I need to multiply it by my LCD, my least common denominator. So this gives me negative 0 0.02 times my denominator of 1 plus 3e to the negative 0 0.02t. And then that's plus all of this here, so I can multiply my coefficient, negative 2 times 3 times negative 0 0.02, and that is 0.12e to the negative 0.02t, and that is over my common denominator. So now let me take this negative 0 0.02 and distribute it through negative 0 0.02 minus 0 0.06e to the negative 0.02t plus, same thing, 0.12, over my LCD. And then I can add these two because they are like terms. And so that gives me negative 0 0.02 plus 0 0.06e to the negative 0.02t over my common denominator of 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.02t. Now that is still n double prime of t divided by n prime of t. So if we wanted to solve for n double prime of t, we know that we would multiply both sides of the equation by n prime of t. And so we get our solution of n double prime of t is equal to this mess here, times my first derivative, which was up here. So times 36e to the negative 0.02t divided by 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.02t squared. Okay. Whew. So we found the second derivative of it. So we found the rate of the rate. Now, what we want to do with this is we want to figure out when is it increasing and when is it decreasing. So we know that we need to basically set this equal to zero. And that's why we wanted to simplify for it as much as possible. So basically, if I'm going to set each of these equal to zero, I don't really need to worry about the denominators. I just need to set where the numerators are equal to zero. And so my first one is negative 0 0.02 plus 0 0.06e to the negative 0.02t. When is that equal to zero? And the second one would be 36e to the negative 0.02t. When is that equal to zero? Well, from the last part, we should know that this one is automatically not equal to zero because E is not defined there. So all I need to do is worry about the second one. So let me move this guy to the other side. So this gives me 0 0.06E to the negative 0.02T is equal to positive 0 0.02 divide by 0 0.06.
So I have e to the negative 0.02t is equal to one third. Then if I take natural log of both sides to cancel out my e, and then divide by my negative 0 0.02. And so I get the solution of T is equal to natural log of one-third over negative 0 0.02. And if you wanted to figure out what that is approximately, and we can actually simplify that. If I do my log rules here, that's the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 3. Now, this is all over negative 0 0.02, but if I wrote that as a fraction, that would be all over negative 1 over 50. Okay, so simplifying a little bit further, natural log of 1 is defined to be 0. If I take my fraction divided by fraction and flip and multiply this, that actually gives me the simplified answer of t is equal to negative or T is equal to positive, because those two negatives cancel out, positive 50 times natural log of 3. So that's my critical value. That's going to separate where my graph is increasing or decreasing. So now we need to do a number line to see where. So my number line is only going to be defined from 0 on, because we have logs in this function, and logs are only defined to be 0 on. And then I have, of course, my critical value of 50 times natural log of 3. If you want that approximate value, that's approximately 54.93. Okay, so I need to plug in test points here. Um, let's plug in, hopefully, easy values. So let's try and plug in 10 and 100. And we need to plug those into the thing that we're testing, which would be this. Here, we need to plug them into our second derivative. I'm going to, in fact, skip the work of that and let you do that on your own. Um, just note that if you were to plug in 10 into this, you would get a positive value, which is saying that it's increasing from 0 to approximately 55. And if you were to... And if you were to plug in 100, you would get a negative value, and it's decreasing from approximately 55 and on. And so that is the answer to this first question here. And let's try and get rid of some of these extras. When is it increasing? Well, it is increasing between 0 and 50 natural log of 3, which is approximately 55. When is it decreasing? It is decreasing between 50 natural log of 3 and infinity. It is decreasing past 55. And then the last question is, what does this actually mean? Well, we're talking about the rate of the rate. So this is where the rate of our population is changing in a positive direction. And this is where the rate of our population is changing in a negative direction. Okay, and then the last part of this. What happens to the population in the long run? Meaning, what happens to the limits of this as t goes to infinity? So we want the limit of this as t goes to infinity of our function. So what would happen if we just focus on this as we plug in infinity to t? Now, this is a growth decay. So we know that our exponential function is graphed such as this. So we know it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so that means it's going to eventually lead to our horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So this portion is eventually going to lead to 0. 
which means that we basically have 600 divided by 1, or we have 600. And so what happens to the population in the long run? It's going to decline until all we have left is 600 in our species. And so that's what happens in the long run. And so now you see an example of why we need to take derivatives of exponential functions. It's to determine population in the long run and population growth and population growth rate in the long run.